Hi, Harrison Dave here. Well, it's that time of year, Thanksgiving, and the holidays are approaching. And that's the time that we open up our menus that we've had from previous years. This is our recipe binder. I know it's not very organized. It's years of um, recipes and, and all that stuff. But we save our menus year after Ho year. Hopefully one day when we retire, uh, we will actually get this in better order. So we have about about 12 years worth of um, yeah. menus here. What we do actually, we begin planning for this year, last year at the end of Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, after the meal I go up to the computer and revise the menu for that from that year to include the things that were the most favorite items and when things were too much, too heavy, we eliminate those. Right. So we always start off with our standard appetizers. We always add a few every year to kind of jazz it up and so uh, to keep it fresh. But we always do our smoky salmon ball. And that's a really delicious recipe that um, has some liquid smoke and it has um, Nova lox in it and with onion. cream cheese with some grated onion and then it's coated always in um, a big hit. Mm, chopped, parsley. chopped parsley, delicious. Right. And the and eggplant parmigiani. That's always a big hit. Good friends of ours gave us that recipe many years ago. Um, and we've liked it so much we've, um, we've been... You're roasting it. the eggplant in the oven and you're bringing out the natural sweetness of that and you're taking the fresh thyme from the herb garden. Actually that recipe requires a lot of herbs and the right. beauty of having an herb garden, doesn't matter what time of year it is, they're always going strong. Yeah, because the advantage of Thanksgiving time, it's right before that heavy frost really hits. So you still have quite a bit of herbs in your garden, like the sage, the, right. the parsley, the thyme. The, uh, I remember the uh, one year we were doing a party and Robin was over actually and she's like, where are you going? I, I said, out to the herb garden and she's like, but it's snow on the ground. <laughs> I'm like, it doesn't matter, I got a snow shovel. We dug out the herbs and plucked them off, it was great. <laughs> the other big thing we always do um, is the chopped liver. Right. I think that kind of in keeping with your Jewish heritage, can't beat chopped liver with some good grated onion and um, actually fried onion in it. And the, really dark. You get the onion really good and brown and it's almost delicious. Black, yeah, almost burnt. black. So then we um, we always start off with a soup and the soup we have made for many years is potato leek soup. Now how I got that recipe was from Julia Childs. I broke my nose when I was in my 20s. So I was home from work recovering and on was Julia Childs uh, cooking show and I watched her make potato leek soup and I made it, I made her recipe myself and now I've evolved it to make it my own recipe and it's been a standard for our Thanksgiving for years but of course with that well we've done a number of variations in the soups we've tried the pumpkin soups and the other but we always come back to that good standby but of course with that is seamless, seamless rolls. rolls love those <laughs> rolls that's a, a friend of mine Arnold his rabbi's wife's name is Seema and she had her special roll recipe which is like a challah roll and so we've taken that recipe right. and we have also evolved that and made that our own. I think that's great because while well, she said, please, this is the secret recipe, you've evolved it and changed that recipe into our own. Um, so therefore we can share it with you guys and eventually that will be up on our blog as well. So of course it's the turkey, the biggest attraction at Thanksgiving. <laughs> and we do two turkeys. Oh, we yes. do our traditional brine turkey, which we usually get from the kosher grocer because it's pre-brined there. You don't have to go through that whole brining process yourself. What was really good with that, and we've done the last couple of years, is getting the white truffle butter. Mm -hmm. You know, we take that and we rub it actually under the skin of the bird. Not only does that help to keep it moist, but the amount of flavor added by the truffle is unbelievable. Yep, with a lot of salt and black pepper on the top, and some chopped, um, some, some uh, uh, chopped um, herbs. Yeah, herbs, I can't think of herbs, <laughs> I'm thinking of lemon thyme. Um, so then, but, but the smoked turkey, well, that tradition the, started with my brother coming up from Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. He came up and said, you have to have a smoked turkey. And we were like, okay, well, we went and got a smoker and, and got it set up. And he said we had to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning to get the turkey prepared. Oh, yeah, so we were really well rested for that meal. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, but, my daughter Leah's absolute favorite. No, before getting to that, how about the stuffings? Oh yeah, forgot about Gosh, the stuffings. We do a stuffing bake-off every year. It's a, it's a turn and challenge between Harris's heritage of the Italian side. Which is um, with rice and with pine nuts and garlic and Parmesan cheese. Raisins. And raisins. And um, all the parts of the turkey are in there. All the too. parts. I take the neck, the giblets, all of it, the liver. Yes, I part. lose all those parts for my stuffing, but that's okay. Um, well, mine, yours is the Mine southern. is much more the southern. Mine has the um, Italian sausage in it with the sage, um, also the spinach, 
and the cornbread, cornbread being the most important part of the it. The only way he wins, or comes any way close, is because he uses that Italian yeah, sausage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Leah's favorite. That's always on the menu. Cannot come off the menu. We tried one year, and you know how that S got us in trouble. Sweet potatoes Grand Marnier, which are great, because you actually cook with the Grand Marnier in it, and then there's a topping with pecans, and it's a real sweet, nice, delicious topping on that. Really, really great. Another favorite that we always do are the Brussels sprouts with the roasted chestnuts. Right. That was a favorite given to you actually by Alan, I believe. Yes, it was. But the reason we really love it, and I like to have it every year, is my family, the Italian um, way we grew up with Thanksgiving, was we always had roasted chestnuts after our meal on Thanksgiving. We sit around, chit chat, maybe play some cards or whatever. And so this recipe gives us an opportunity to kind of put that together so I get that flavor of the chestnuts that we've always had. The advantage is finding the chestnuts are already shelled because I remember many years Leah and all of us sitting around the table saying, these darn chestnuts trying to get that shell off was ridiculous. Um, another great favorite also from cranberry. another dear friend. Yeah, cranberry the onion confit. Um, which is a really amazing, amazing uh, side dish that you will have to get this recipe and try because you take pearl onions and garlic and white wine and some really great vinegar and raisins again and you cook this down for many, many, many hours, yeah. which all of the herbs are in it and everything what else. What is, is really funny about how that evolved, when we started making that initially, mm -hmm. everybody's like, oh, I don't know about that. Right. And it was kind of the joke of like, oh, dad's making that again. Well, <laughs> what's really funnier into that story is now everybody looks forward to it. And we, and we actually have good. friends that are like, are you making that again this year? Can you make a little extra so you can bring it down to our house and we can have it with our meal? Right. Well, of course, we always make the traditional uh, cranberry relish as right. well. Now, for our desserts. Oh, how about the, the very first one on the list and how you got that recipe? The white chocolate macadamia nut pie. Yes. Uh, I had a roommate when I was much younger, and um, David, and he was very covenant about his uh, desserts that he made. He was a unbelievable baker and uh, this pie that he made white chocolate macadamia nut pie he worked through months to try and get it right and then I offered to do him a favor and put it on the computer for him so it'd be nice in a nice neat format which Funny, of course how did you ever happen to come that in your possession click now? save <laughs> <laughs> so that was really great and then of course we make the Jewish apple cake and we got that recipe from our dear friend Robin and that recipe also evolved because Robin would make Jewish apple cake because and she would use um, vegetable oil in her cake and not use well, any butter. I think that's really the only true connection to that being Jewish, actually. We call it a Jewish apple cake, but in essence, it really originated in Pennsylvania with the Amish as right? being a dense cake, right? How, I think, what I looked up, because I was trying to understand how it is that it's a Jewish apple cake, and it was really because there is no dairy in that cake, so you can actually have it with meat. Right. Right, right. And of course, lemon meringue pie, my brother Jimmy's favorite. Yeah, no yeah. Thanksgiving goes without lemon meringue pie for Jim. And then, of course, we have the pumpkin pie, and we do a variation on that. Some thing. years it would just be the traditional pumpkin pie, but a good friend of mine had given me many years ago a pumpkin pie cheesecake recipe. And that is where you're actually making a traditional New York style cheesecake, and you're putting that on the bottom. You actually ladle it in very carefully, and then ladle on top of that the pumpkin pie mixture. And they actually become two separate cakes in one. It's beautiful when you slice it. And then, of course, Carol, she makes a traditional. Um, uh, trifle. Trifle, but she makes it sugar-free for... Um, My brother for, Don, who is diabetic. Right. So for him, that works really well. So for us, Thanksgiving is, is not just about the food, but it's right. about family, good friends. It's all about making everything from scratch. Right. It's all about everyone contributing. But you can't just stop at a grocery store and buy an apple pie and bring it. No. That's the only thing we ask of all those that come to our meal. We invite everybody. Our door is open to all, and they know it. Yeah. Even if they're not going to be at the sit-down dinner table, wow, the crowd will sometimes double and triple by the time dessert's around. Right. Um, but we ask if you are going to bring something to make it homemade, um, and actually if you can do it from a family recipe or something that's been handed down to you. And you can also create your own traditions as we do every Thanksgiving. We sit around the table and everyone has a chance to say what they're thankful for for that year. So we look forward to sharing our recipes. We hope you have as nice of a Thanksgiving as we plan to this year. Thanks, Thanks a lot. for joining us on our blog. Follow us also on our fan page um, in Facebook or in YouTube. Um, and also we now have the website that's up, um, The Dads, Harris and Dave.
No, it's called harrisondave.com. Oh, sorry. <laughs>